Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Noir Histoire. I'm Natasha, and in this episode, I'll be sharing what I've learned about Julius Nereri. Born on April 13, 1922, died on October 14, 1999, notable activist and politician, nationality Tanzanian. Julius Kambaraj Nereri was born in Butiama, Tanganyika, the son of Nereri Burrito, a minor Zanika chief, and one of his wives. At the age of 12, he was enrolled at the local mission school for his primary education before moving on to Tabora Secondary School. Nereri later attended Makerere University in Uganda, from which he obtained teaching credentials. The period during which Nereri was attending university would have a tremendous impact in the direction of his future. Tabora had been a Roman Catholic school, and while attending Makerere, Nereri converted to Roman Catholicism and adopted Julius as his baptismal name. A few years later, he organized what would become the Tanganyika African Association, or the TAA. The TAA was Tanganyika's first student group, and Nereri worked with collaborators to shift the African Association from a broader pan-African perspective towards a more national focus. With his credentials, Nereri found a teaching position in Tanganyika at a Catholic mission school. In 1949, Nereri left the country once more to further his education, this time moving to Scotland, where he became the first Tanganyikan to earn a degree upon his graduation from Edinburgh. During this period, several African nations were beginning to move towards independence from European colonial powers. The time Nereri spent at Edinburgh and abroad in general exposed him to new perspectives, and being in Europe gave him an opportunity to follow these changes as they were being discussed and debated in Europe. After completing his studies at Edinburgh, Nereri returned to Dar es Salaam, where he found a teaching position. The following year included some personal changes as he married Maria Gabriel Majig, who was also a school teacher. Nereri and his wife would go on to have seven children. A few months after his marriage, Nereri became the president of the TAA, which he later reconfigured into the Tanganyikan African National Union, or TANU or the TANU, the country's first political party. While some neighboring nations would undergo brutal revolts against the rule of imperialist powers, the TANU advocated for freedom from British rule through peaceful nonviolent change. Nereri called for unity and equality within Tanganyika and attempted to avoid the issues of tribalism and ethnic prejudice that would plague other nations as they became independent. Nereri joined the country's legislative council and testified before the UN trustee councilship to further advocate international for Tanganyika's independence. As his national and international profile rose and he became a key spokesperson for the country, Nereri gave up his teaching career. Now fully focused on politics, he had to contend with Britain's deliberately slow and obstructive move towards Tanganyika's independence. Elections were held in 1958, which saw TNU members win the majority of positions on the Legislative Council. In response, the British created new positions, more than doubling the number of council positions in an attempt to dilute the TNU. TANU's influence. Nereri and the TANU who continued to push for independence and were able to win all but one seat in the 1960 election. On September 2, 1960, Tanganyika gained limited self-government and Nereri became the chief minister. Over the next two years, Tanganyika would undergo political and structural changes that would result in its independence and Nereri serving as its first prime minister and then president. Hoping to avoid tribalism and the conflict caused by political parties, Tanganyika adopted a single party system, which would remain in place for several decades. As president of the Republic of Tanganyika, Nereri combined some Western ideologies with African political traditions as well as local practices. Tanganyika would be one of the few African nations with a native official language. Decisions would be made through meetings of roundtable discussions where all parties would have a chance to share their perspective. Following a merger with Zanzibar, the new country became the Republic of Tanzania. Hoping to alleviate and avoid further economic inequality, Nereri introduced a form of cooperative farming that was aimed at making the country economically self-reliant. Nereri recognized the need for African nations to be unified. He provided support and a safe haven for anti-apartheid activists. Nereri also denounced Idi Amin and provided support for rebels as they worked to overthrow Amin's government. When Nereri left office in 1985, he left behind a mixed legacy. Production, commodity prices, and export issues caused by his economic system played a part in Tanzania's dependence on foreign aid, and the conflict with Uganda had also been economically devastating. But the country boasted a 90% literacy rate, political stability, and decreased infant mortality. 
Nereri had remained involved in Tanzanian politics even after leaving office, but finally made a complete break in 1990. Julius Nereri died in London at the age of 77 from leukemia. Despite his imperfect record, his intentions earned him the honored title of Father of the Nation in Tanzania. Thanks for tuning in. Show notes and sources are available on the Noir Histoire website by the link in the episode description. I'm working on creating downloadables and infographics, so keep an eye on the website. These Black History Facts are released every Tuesday, so if you enjoyed this episode and want more, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and check out my Black History Facts playlist.